Attention! Do you like fantasy, supernatural, action, romance, drama, magic, shape-shifting, betrayal, comedy, revenge, curses, spells, redemption, plot twists? Oh my gosh, that is a lot of themes. Then Beauty and the Beast of Paradise Lost is the manga that you need to be reading right now. Now this manga has three volumes out right now. It's currently ongoing with the fourth volume coming out very, very soon in about a month or so. So it's the perfect time for me to discuss why this manga is so good in so many ways and why its flaws are also good. If that makes sense, it will make sense. But this story revolves around Belle on the front cover right here, who is our main character. She lives in a small town right outside some forbidden woods. Now nobody ever goes into these woods because there's an old fairy tale that a beast lives in there and he kidnaps anybody that comes in, specifically girls. Now Belle being an adventurous young girl decides, hey, a fairy tale is just a fairy tale, it's not real. So she goes into these woods searching for a flower to match her violet hair. She is very unique. She's the only one in town that actually has violet hair. So people actually put her down a lot because of this, because she's different. But back to Belle going into the forbidden woods that she probably shouldn't go into. We've seen this one too many times, but she does it anyways for this flower. Her mom ends up following her into these woods and what ensues is a beast. Who would have guessed? Living in these forbidden woods, looking to kidnap girls. Now the mom being the mom, saves her daughter in a heroic act, but also a cruel act as well, saying that her daughter is too ugly for the beast because the beast only wants pretty girls, quote unquote, on the outside. So he takes the mom instead, and Belle is left there without a mom in these forbidden woods, feeling like it's all of her fault, and with her mom's last words being that she is ugly. So it's a lot to handle, and this manga just really dives into it very quickly and also gets dark very quickly as well. Belle goes back home to her dad, who really didn't seem like he liked her too much to begin with, now ends up putting her inside of a room, locking her in there for years to come with no sunlight, making her do all of the chores for money. And he doesn't even work. He just goes and gets drunk at the local bar. And there is just a lot. This first volume is around 200 pages, which isn't too big for how much actually goes on in this story. Like that right there that I just talked about, which felt like a pretty long time, actually ensued in only the first chapter. There's just so much in here that it's actually the manga's biggest fault is that there's almost too much within it. It probably could have been expanded the first volume at least into two sufficient volumes. But hey, if a manga's biggest fault is that it's gonna have too many plot lines and too much going on, then I will take that. I will happily take that in a manga rather than one that just really doesn't have a plot or really doesn't have anything going for it. Okay, no offense. No offense to Rent a Girlfriend. I actually really enjoy the anime. I know that my opinion is in the minority there, but I, I like it for what it is. So. so back to the story. With all of this happening, Belle decides that she is going to break out of this room and go and try and find her mother from the beast that kidnapped her. Now, Belle actually ends up coming across the real beast. There's a sus beast living in these woods, being the imposter. And I'm going to take a lot and just condense it so I can talk about why this manga is so great rather than just the manga itself. Belle ends up finding finding herself with the real beast who lives in a floating castle that travels across time and land. Now, that's where a lot of the fantasy comes in. He lives with all of these like dejected characters who have been transformed by our villain. Her name is La Medium. This is actually a French themed fantasy manga. That is basically the story is Belle is searching for her mother who has been captured by La Medium and the real beast is also searching for La Medium as well. So they both have a common objective in sight and that's that's as much as I want to go into because I don't want to give too many spoilers away for anybody that hasn't read the story yet. But what makes this manga so great is the amount that is actually put into it. The manga con just goes, how many plot lines do we want? And they just answer all of them because they have so many. They have the plot line with the beast. They have a plot line with Amidiem. They have a plot line with Belle, her dad, her mom, some people on the floating castle as well. Like there is just a ton and they do it very well. And the first volume is a little bit confusing confusing and I was like, do they really need all of this? But then once you drift into the second and the third, they really explore those plot lines. It doesn't leave you with such an overwhelming feeling as the first. And I'm really glad that I continued after the first volume because I could have easily dropped it and been like, this is just too much, just too much in this manga. But they explore it well and I'm excited to see where it goes past this because the third volume left on a cliffhanger, the second and the first, they all left on cliffhanger. So I'm really excited. But this story explores so many concepts that I think are very important. They explore the concept of your self-perceived image 
by others around you. Belle was bullied as a child growing up and then her mom's last words were that she was ugly and her dad treats her terribly, absolutely terribly. So Belle has zero self-confidence in herself up to this point. Even though she has always been a fighter, she just does not believe in herself. And it truly shows you that you can be a product of your surroundings. And the whole arc is just me rooting for Belle, just trying to get out of this rut that she has constantly been into. She's just thrown into so many terrible situations. So it's great to just root for a main character that was literally in rock bottom. Like it couldn't have gotten worse for her. She loses her mother. She's trapped with her dad just berating her, abusing her. And now she is on the hunt and she is doing great things in the story. It also just puts a very hard emphasis on not judging others based on their appearances. This whole story puts huge emphasis on that, sometimes very obviously and sometimes not so obviously. I realized myself that at the end of the third volume, every single character that looks a certain way and that acts a certain way is completely different. But for example, the real beast is completely misunderstood, absolutely hated by pretty much everybody, but has a pretty complicated past. So with everybody hating him, Belle automatically assumes to hate him. But once she learns who he really is, he's actually a good person or beast, I guess. So that's one example. But literally every single character I realized, I was like, wow, the mangaka does a really good job of making every single character be a exactly what they shouldn't be. And it sounds like that's a bad thing, but it's a great thing. And I think what this story is really going for, aside from a romance, aside from all of those other things that I listed as well with action, fantasy, supernatural, magic, and so on, is just an emphasis on how much society is obsessed with looks and image and how it's not as significant as we put the emphasis on it to be. Because all of these characters, like I was just saying, are great in their own ways or are terrible in their own ways, but none of it is because because of their looks. Honestly, I think it's a great message without it being explicitly obvious and just forced. I think it's a really good way to do it in a fantasy manga. And it's something that I was not really expecting too much. When I picked up this manga, I looked at the cover and I was like, wow, this looks Red Riding Hood-esque with some monsters. I don't really particularly love fantasy manga, but this has made me want to explore it more because it involved so much more than fantasy. It involved so many real world obstacles and challenges that people deal with on a daily basis basis into a fantasy manga. So you're not really thinking about all of these fantasy elements as much as you're thinking of how bad you feel for Belle, how bad you feel for the beast, how much you want her to see her mom again. And honestly, that's what's so great about it is that it doesn't just box itself into being a fantasy manga. And I think we really get to see the manga blossom towards the end of the third volume. It doesn't stop with opening up plot lines. It just adds more. And there is a great love triangle that's involved with this. The manga turns from fantasy action into fantasy romance. And this isn't to say that this manga doesn't have faults. It can definitely be stronger in a lot of areas. For one, like I said, there were so many plot lines that were so condensed and jam packed into just one volume. Could have easily been stretched out. And I think it would have been a little bit more of an enjoyable read. And I'm sure plenty of people can find their faults in this manga. I'm not saying it's the best fantasy manga of all time, but it's a new fantasy manga. I think it's a refreshing take on the fantasy genre itself. And I think it's worth a read. Actually, it is definitely worth a read. Beauty and the Beast of Paradise Lost is a great tale. It's a tale about revenge. It's a tale about believing in yourself. It's a tale about being yourself, being comfortable with yourself and the way you are and the way you look. And it sounds kind of corny saying all of these things, but it can also be very inspiring to read something like this, especially with great art in a French themed fantasy world with a floating castle racing against the clock to save one's life and another. I know that I haven't gotten into too many specifics of the story itself, but I want to leave it as spoiler free as possible because if anybody is actually interested in reading this I want them to experience it for what it is and not really have too many judgments on it beforehand because honestly the whole theme is to not do that so I don't want to give you too many spoilers but if you are into literally any genre in the world then I would give this a shot because it probably has something that you'll like in here there's even comedic elements as well when needed there's three volumes out right now they all have beautiful artwork as well this isn't a paid advert advertisement by the way but when I read something great I feel like it's worth talking about and if you guys enjoy these videos let me know I'll gladly talk about more series because there's a lot of series that I absolutely love and really want to share my thoughts on so I can go more in depth with spoilers let me know if you like it with just me kind of letting you know about the plot with no spoilers or if you want some spoilers but yeah that's it for this video I really love this series even though it's imperfect it's definitely worth a shot and a read I hope that you enjoyed the video something a little bit different and I will see you next time for probably another manga haul I I'm I'm due. I really want to go back into a bookstore and just look around. So I'll see you next time.